What's up, guys? This is David, A.K. Reverse Long, and today we got a Macro Jabber podcast. I'm here with my co-host Justin Robertson from the But Would You a Community Crypto Community, and yeah, we're gonna go over some general stuff and um, just catch up over here. And but the main uh, topic we're gonna t- mention and talk about is uh, about Discord and how we've used Discord to get better at trading and 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 uh, just better at uh, just understanding the markets and crypto. And now for me with stocks, I started to use Discord uh, maybe like uh, late last year. So now it's it's April in 2023, so like four or five months. And uh, yeah, I you know, Discord's great. I, I didn't know it was like this uh, beforehand. It, it was like a really difficult thing for me to understand. I used to be like overwhelmed with all the all the channels on the side and all this stuff going on. Now I'm getting used to it. But before we talk all that, so Justin, how's it going, man? Yo, what's going on, my brother? How you living, man? I'm doing good, man. Just uh, I survived um, a near catastrophe on T.O.P. Uh, and like, yeah, yeah. So like that it was an insane squeeze of a Chinese Cayman Island um, stock, you know, and like what's, what's crazy is and I don't think you've checked it out yet. I think you saw the post and you, you saw like the video. You're aware of it, but you haven't like watched it. But I interviewed this guy that's an investment banker with one of the shadiest uh he's one of the shadiest underwriters of um of these chinese companies he's not but he's not from the cayman islands chinese Wait, company. i think i've seen that one that was uh the episode 329 dan uh, dan, dan, dan mcclory Mc- yeah, yeah yeah dan mcclory so like um he came on my podcast so people don't know right it's like they think oh david is interviewing this guy ah whatever but they don't know that like i basically checkmated this guy so like uh <laughs> You know, I, I'm paying attention to my emails and I get an email from like a publicist or a, a, one of these online uh, what, secretary or online um, like assistant, like a assistant. Yeah, assistant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. saying, hey, David, there's this guy, uh, Dan McClory wants to come on your podcast to talk about um, this new soccer team. And I was like, what? So I, 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 go, I was like, man, I don't want to pump some soccer team. You know, it's like <laughs> some some stock. And I looked at the stock. It was like some illiquid stock. And I was like. And then I, I, she mentioned the name and I Googled the name and I was like, oh my God. And the LinkedIn showed up and the LinkedIn said, uh, this, you know, Bowstead securities and Chinese IPOs. And I'm like, holy, sh- this is a, this is one of those shady guys. We got him. Um, yeah. We-, <laughs> <laughs> we got him over here. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. And I was like, oh, okay. So I emailed back and I was like, oh yeah, he's for sure. And I said, is this him? And I put a screenshot of the LinkedIn. So, oh yeah, that's, that's him. He's happy to come on. And I was like, oh, great. Let's get him on. And um, but but little do they know that I have a sh- the friendly bear, not the macro driver, but the friendly bear is a short selling themed podcast. It's the, the bear and the guy is the reverse long. So how are you going to come on the reverse longs podcast, the friendly bear and talk up and try to pump some garbage stock? And you're a Chinese IPO guy. You know, so and you've told me before about like the the Chinese girls that message, yeah, and yeah, like yeah, this, yeah, kind of the some of the shady stuff. All that, that anybody it's... that's been listening to the Friendly Bear long enough, like, would know that, like, yo, Chinese stocks, David's ears perk up. Like, what's going yeah, on? It's it's insane. So, um, I I you know I when I made Macro Jabber, I thought about uh putting some more awareness to the public about like the Chinese Cayman Islands. It's it's, it's entertaining too. You, because if you will see like the Tinder swindler, this is like the Chinese stock swindler, you know. So, and I brought that up in the in the in the conversation with that guy Dan McGlory. He didn't like it. He said, "I don't know." He he got. You can tell by his demeanor. He got well, really I angry. Well, I noticed. I noticed the episode's only twelve minutes long, and you know your your episodes are usually a little bit lengthier. So yeah. I was so like, so uh... so check this out. So um, he came on thinking he's just gonna straight up pump his his soccer team. So I kind of like blindsided him. So like what? So entering the podcast, I knew I was like, man, this guy's not gonna go for like an hour talking about like Chinese IPOs because like <laughs> I'm gonna be calling him out, and like I'm not. This is not a. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna give softball questions to this guy, you know. So because because like a lot of my friends have lost a lot of money on these things, and there's some friends of mine that haven't come back from these Chinese stock. You know, they they lost their careers. It's, not, it's a serious thing. So like. When you when you go through the pain of seeing that, and I've and I've had some issues with the Chinese stocks too. They're not easy to trade at all. Um, I'm about break even on them overall. Uh, uh, the Chinese IPOs overall through the history of my trading, and um, so when you go through that, the the battlefield 
how am I supposed to even like entertain softball questions to this guy when I've been through the I have scars from these Chinese stocks? So then it's like, uh, when someone, I, dis, it's like someone disrespecting you and then trying to come over for dinner. It's like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's exactly like that. So I didn't give him softball, but I knew beforehand, I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to try to be cordial as possible and be respectful and like, you know, and just ask questions like, like, uh, like I wasn't getting emotional or anything. If you look at, mm -hmm. I, I handled it pretty well. And um, then eventually he blew a gasket. He was being professional too, but eventually you ask a question, it triggers and he blows a gasket. And then <laughs> could have handled it. You could have handled the hot yeah, seat. Th that was the 13 minutes. And then um <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> and then uh and then after that I, I said, Oh, so we did we both decided to change the, the topic because like uh, after that it's already done. Like what else we're we gonna do? And then uh and then I said, Okay, at least in my head, I'm like, at least he had the balls to show up and let's like, you know, um and 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 talk about it. And then like, I'll give them time. That's why I posted the second half on macro driver. So I posted the first half on friendly bear, second half of macro driver. And, and it's cool. Cause some people put the puzzle together. I've gotten some responses and they kind of figured out, Oh, so that's why this guy was on the podcast. He came on to pump his stock, but he, he ended up talking to a short seller. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, I'm wondering, I'm wondering like how, like if this is a new strategy from some of those guys though, because like, I feel like, um, you know, in the crypto world, they have the, the honeypots where they, it's like a smart contract that kind of baits you in, right? It, they set everything up to look like, oh, this could be something good. And then as soon as you go into it, it's like, you can't get out of it. I'm wondering if, um, you know, maybe a new strategy from some of these uh, Chinese stock pump and dumpers is to, to make short sellers aware and then try to see, you know, oh, can we squeeze them? How much can we squeeze them? Um, so I'm kind of yeah. glad that I'm glad that you called it out though. And you kind of pointed out to him like, bro, like you're not coming on here to do that. Like, yeah, this not, this is not the time for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, you know, what's very interesting is that these Chinese stocks, now that I'm, we're talking about it and like, you're in the heavy in the crypto community, this is, this is like crypto. These Chinese uh, Cayman islands is just like crypto. I think the concept is the same. They, you got the honey pot. You know what the crypto people do? They 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 really get the concepts well. I mean, you know, you know what I mean? Because it's a lot of people trading crypto. It's like in my in my section of the market, my corner of the market with with these small caps, it's a very small amount of traders, a very small amount of short sellers shorting this compared to crypto. So crypto, you have all these people coming together and they come up with these terms like the honeypot, which is exactly what happened here. So all these Chinese girls, so TOP was a Chinese girl stock, um, which I, I talked about with Dan McClory. And he's wait, like, wait, clarify just for the listeners. Like, what is it? What is it? What do you mean by Chinese girl stock? Right. People oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, what? So, so it's uh, these WhatsApp girls, Twitter girls and, uh, and Tinder girls. And like they've they've really like, it's like catfish expanded. Accounts, right. Yeah. Catfish accounts. And it's always girls for. In their like 30s, so they seem like kind of attainable. I just, you know, it was like, like the regular guy feels like, oh, she kind of likes me or something. Because look at her, she's <laughs> she's just a regular girl, you know. She's not she like stocks. I like stocks, you know. Yeah, That's yeah, made in heaven. Exactly, and uh, they don't stop, man. They've gotten really brazen, and uh, you know, so they they uh, anyways. So so whenever they, I know some traders, some really good traders. They only short the ones with the girls. They don't short the ones that the there's a lot of Chinese stocks, but they don't have the girls on it. But the ones with the girls, they tend to have like very temporary moves and then they crash. Now this one, this move, a uh, two thousand percent move. Who can anticipate Ooh. that? That's insane. It's six dollars to two hundred sixty. It's uh, I don't even know what what percentage move that is. A thousand, yeah. two thousand. Yep. That was all just in one like one trading day and a little bit of uh after hours, right? Yeah, the after hours is is the big move because uh the after hours there's there's like no almost no regulation at all. There's no halts. There's no um yeah the brokers start closing up and they start changing their rules. Like one broker uh said there no top nobody can hold it overnight. So even if you're making money on it, you can't hold it overnight. The broker doesn't want the risk. So the broker forced people out, said, all right. So like people that are not even, that are managing it well, they're still forced out of it. So like um, when that happens, it's just like a, a squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then like, so the Chinese, like they're just, 
their specific stocks, they just are ruthless. And like, it's a low float stock. So someone took the supply. Like, a, think about like a Chinese guy in China, like you can't go there. He just took the entire supply of the stock and he's not reporting it properly because he's in China. You know, like uh, there's regulation with stocks. So like anything over 5%, you got to report. Right. Now, if you're in China, like, why would you even care about that rule? You can just, I mean, you could do it. You can report, but like, you know, you don't have, you know what I mean? You're in China. You no know, one's really holding gonna... you accountable. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so this does behave like crypto. So that, that, that um analogy of the honeypot fits perfect. So these Chinese girls say, Hey, buy this stock. My uncle says to buy the stock. And then people, so what happens is, is the, instead of people buying it, because this stuff has been going on for a while. So now there's like, there's less people buying and, but there's more short sellers. So they attract the short sellers to the pot, like a, Mm -hmm. be to the honey or, or or fly to the honey and then once they absorb enough they have their own tactics it's almost like the game battleship you know you know the game battleship you put of course. so it's like these guys you know th they probably have this down to a science you know um where they they have like a i can imagine like you've seen um i think we both talked about before you've seen like like a like a, a, a classroom with a projector and there's like a Chinese guy, they put the stock on the wall and they're like, they actually invert. I don't know if you've seen this. The, the red candle is the green candle and the they green candles the are chart. red. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then they, they're just manually there like gamers, like a room full of 50 people squeezing the stock and doing wash trading and all this kind of crazy stuff. And like, who knows where that is in China? You know what I mean? So like they have this down to a science. So like, imagine that happening, but like now they have like, they they have a like like a a chart printed out and be like uh like marks where the shorts are. They're like, oh, this is all the area with the shorts. You know, this is this. They, yeah, so they see they, all those bids or ass sitting there, and they're just like, yo, we know once we them. break through. Yeah, once we get yes. to this level, we're shooting up to this level. Like, yeah. So the, um, you have them all. They're all in the room together, and they're counting down. Literally, okay, guys, ready? Three, two, one. Yes. And then they'll smash the button, and you'll see like these like God mode candles just. Uh, I've seen God, it. old <laughs> candles. Yeah, exactly. What so, so crypto. This is a this is a a, a thing. This is a, a known thing. Like what go like there's, yeah, honey especially... pot. Yeah, you use God mode candle. You know, uh, let's okay. We got everybody here in the honey pot. Let's squeeze them. Exactly, one hundred percent. Well, with crypto, um, basically, and it's also a lot of Chinese, uh, you know, people creating those coins, Chinese coins, but uh, they make meme coins. And like, there's no, since there's no federal, like there's no regulation around it, you can add liquidity. And so say you're putting all the money into a pot, right? So I'm buying something right now. It's worth $1 and the market cap is, um, you know, $5,000 market cap, literally $5,000, right? So then I put in $5,000 market caps, 10K, you put in 10K market caps, 20K and the price is going up and up and up. And, but basically if we created the token, now all these other people jump in and they, they put in money, put in money, put in money. We can pull the liquidity because we created the token. And so now there's no liquidity. The price goes to zero because no, you can't so, do anything. So, so this is the, the same thing with the Chinese stock. So eventually they all c collapse hard. But uh, recently, uh, I mean, especially today, like they just, the, the, they're not selling. They just, uh, you know, they just held they just it. Hold it, hold it. That's yeah, and, crazy. And, and there's no regulate. I mean, the regulation, I guess the, the exchanges, they're like, there's no reason to stop this. Like when I interviewed that guy, he said, I asked him, hey, this 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 is uh, not good for the markets. It needs to be eradicated. He's like, these are just price swings. Why would you want to use just <laughs> price swings? Like, what do you mean just price swings, man? <laughs> this is straight this up is manipulation. How, this is just how markets work, you know? Yeah. We got to yeah. have free markets out here. Yeah, well, he's... he's uh in a yacht like off of the coast of italy oh by the way he's he lives in italy like of course he's he, like he has shares for himself they gave him shares and like the, he of course he doesn't mind for the price swing to go at two thousand percent i wonder you know, when just, he uh exited his exited his position yeah i mean i mean who knows we gotta be careful because like i don't know man this guy is so shady who knows man who knows and um and i don't care bro like i like the thing is with my podcast, I, I always, when I started uh, podcasting, I said, I, I want to have like almost no filter. And at the same time, you do got to, you know, watch what you say here and there. You know you what I mean? You be respectful, be... you know, yeah, just of course. in general, in general, right? Because a lot of times I feel like um, people like 
you know, you, me, like we get these platforms and whether you get a huge success or a little bit of success. And I mean, success by like how many people actually watch your stuff or whatever, like, you know, at, you do set an example to an extent, right? So like you're setting a great example yeah. from trading, but like at the end of the day, like I'm sure you want to like see nicer, better people in the world, right? Like, so I don't know. I take a lot. I, I try to think about that. Like, I, you know, I'm joke. I'm always joking around. I'm yeah, yeah. and I'm having fun. But like at the end of the day, like, you know, there's a certain level of respect because I, I think we talked about it before. Some people like get in the comments and it's just like, yo, are you good? Like some of the comments yeah, yeah. You see people leave us like, yo, are you, are you okay? <laughs> like, I just want to yeah. ask like, yeah, you know, so it's it's just like, I don't know, just be mindful of stuff, you know what I mean? Because especially in something like this, a lot of um, a lot of people are in pain, you know, from the short selling side. And also, I don't know, it's just it's just a difficult subject, like especially blaming that guy, Dan McClory. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot more. Like, so this this actually this investment banker of this of this specific stock was Univest. So Univest has a bunch of Dan McClory's. Dan McClory is just one guy, you know, but like there's. When I made that podcast, I was like, okay, so now this somebody wrote in the comments and Twitter said, oh, what do we learn from this? Like, this doesn't matter. And like, of course, I'm not going to respond. I'm just like, whatever. But I, but in here, I, now I can mention it to like a more and more, a bigger audience. Right. And yeah, so it's good to know who the Dan McClory's of the world are. Because it's like, that's just one guy. But there's like a lot of investment bankers. They're all like that. You can just take them and be like, and clone them. They all don't care about you. They all don't care about the manipulation. They all, they're like politicians. You tell them, what about the price swings? What about the manipulation? What about this? What about that? What about this fake company? This company is not even real. And he's like, you know, it's like, it's just a Chinese company. The Chinese company has the right to listen to American markets. These are just price swings, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? You know, so, but like, you know, it's just like it's good to know that 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 guy is is they're all like that, you know. I, I mean, for the most, I'm not gonna say any, all like that. Not, not like, all of them, but for anybody that says like, "What do you learn from this?" or like, "How like you know why are we even talking about it?" It's like the same thing. Like you know, some people grow up street smart and some people don't, right? Like you you start to tend to to notice and see things and be more aware of certain things when you grow up and you see certain situations. And the more and more you're in those situations, the more muscle memory you build and start to realize, hey. I probably shouldn't do that because, you know, I yeah. know the ramifications. And so like anybody, you know, it's that's like an ill-educated comment because. Yeah, no, for sure. So in this case, like there, there's like uh, red flags for these specific investment bankers, like uh, Univest, T.O.P. is Univest. Um, and it's a Cayman Islands one. So it's like whenever you see these red flags, it's good to proceed with caution with these because your your money is going to be reflected like you do you want to lose your career for something like this i don't know you know it's, and um it's not worth know, blowing up for like yeah not with all the hard work you put in to blow up on some like you know yeah and i mean yeah top yeah i traded it and like you know i had a setback but like at the same time i'm i'm okay but like there's a lot of because i plan for ahead of time for that but like there's a lot of traders that i know that are really suffering from this and the, the one previously last year i i l a g HKD, the ones we talked about. HKD. Um, yeah. I ma I managed to stay out of those. I, I didn't get involved, but I know a lot of traders that have suffered from those as well. And those are, guess what? Chinese Cayman Islands, you know? So, um, and it's a bunch of guys like Dan McClory that doesn't care. They don't care about you. They're, they're managing this stuff. They're getting it. They're getting it on the exchange. So, you know, to get rich off of you. So yeah, they're like, as long as I get mine. <laughs> You know, while we're on the topic of like some of these collapsing stocks, um, because like as you were mentioning it, and to the listeners out there, you know, I, I deal a lot more crypto. That's kind of like my lane, but I have interest in obviously macro, what's going on, and then in specifically like short selling. That's why I'm always following everything uh -huh. that you got going on. Um, but what do you know or what have you heard about the like um some of these more bank stocks, right? So we just had a uh, was it First Republic and just that's the right, day? like um, so I I mean. I haven't been following it since the big, the big contagion thing. So, oh, since the last time we spoke about it. Yeah, yeah, I, we were on. Yeah, but I do have a, a like a small amount of news feed coming. So when I'm in the shower, I listen to Amazon A L E X A. I gotta be careful or else it turns on, um, <laughs> and it tells me the news. So apparently, like, what I understand, you probably know more about it than I do. But like, uh, what I understand is. Um, it's gonna need a bigger cash infusion than what uh J P Morgan gave it and stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's actually crazy. So the, the the government got together and basically told like a bunch of these banks, like, look, you guys are going to have to bail out um, this bank, because if not, 
like either put up a few billion dollars, you know, put up like five billion dollars now collectively, like amongst all you guys to bail it out or face putting up 15 to 30 billion dollars down the road when, you know, it goes into receivership and and how it plays out there um, because the government said like they, they're not going to be able to step in or they don't know how it's going to proceed. So, um, but I know, yeah, I know the stock, it went to like five bucks or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's crazy from 40 bucks to five dollars. Now, um, if it goes super low, I don't know. I might be tempted to buy it and just hold it for like 10 years. I keep thinking about that time in 2008 where like all the banks crashed. But like First Republic Bank is not like a like a tier one bank or whatever. You know, it's not like a Bank of America or something. No, but, um, it's not one of the big four. It's um, but it but is it, like top 20, though. Yeah, it is. And it could get acquired by one. And then, you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to play it, you know, so. So I stay out, but like, it is interesting to see, you know, and just to be part of it. Like, okay. Yeah. It's kind of like history. You know what I mean? It's like, we're yeah. living through some, some history and I'm, I'm always just curious. I'm like, wow, we're going to look back on this and, you know, five, 10, like think about the people that look back on the dot com bubble or the housing market bubble. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. saying it's, it's not that yet, but like, it's just kind of crazy just to be like, damn, wow. Like all this yeah. going on and, and we're living through it. So. Absolutely. And so I bought the domain S S V B bank crash.com uh and to, uh, other variations of it and and uh first republic bank crash i don't know i forgot the i forgot the exact words but i, I bought a few domains you know just for, for the fun of it you know but um but yeah you know it, it is it is history so I, that's the way i saw it that's why i bought the domain i was like this is kind of like history you know so let's see what happens very small investment for so like 20 bucks you can buy a domain you know so, <laughs> Man, yeah, like that. you never know i think yeah. like uh the guy, Michael Saylor, the guy that owns all the Bitcoin, like he bought like something like um like home.com, like way back, like way it's back. He's lot, never yeah. sold it. He's never sold it. He's like uh people have like offered him and he's turned everybody down. He's like been holding it for like 30 years or something. Uh, don't quote me exactly on that, but there's yeah, something, yeah. Like, something like that. But, but it's interesting if you, if you can be savvy enough, because this is something I found out about ever since I started being more interested in like trading and financial literacy and just Im improving with finances and business. And uh, I was like, I wish I would have known about how to buy. I didn't even know how to buy uh, domains until like three years ago. You know, so it's like, it's crazy. I wasn't, we speak about this a lot. Like I was in college and university for so long and I didn't learn anything about this. Like, like for example, business credit, buying domains, starting a business, trading, what short selling is, what buying is, what the NASDAQ is, what the New York stock exchange is. What a ticker what it, is what a ticker is. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know anything. So like, that's crazy how, you know, I think that should be mandatory, like in schools to teach all of that stuff. It's not, it's not even that much. It's not even that much to ask. It's just like, I know. And it's really getting around the right people with the right mindset. You know what I mean? Like all I, all I cared about when I was younger and not to anybody else's credit, you know, I, I am my own person, but it was just like, yeah. oh, what are the girls doing? Oh, let's go out. Tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. Do this, so this. And it's just kind of like, yeah, it's just not, you know, just weren't focused. And now I have friends that like in my crypto circle, that's like kind of all we talk about, but it's yeah. like, it's leading to, you know, oh, this is how I should get into this business. And oh, this SaaS business. Oh, how do I build this? How to create this? Oh, how does machine learning work? Oh, like, you know what I mean? It starts down yeah. that path where it's just like, oh, I'm just continuing down this path of learning. But, um, and I, I think the internet is beautiful for that, man. And YouTube and stuff, like you can reach out to people. And I say this in my podcast, like the paid subscribers, I have like a $10 payment now, whatever, just to support the podcast. And I give like a little side stuff here and there. And uh, I say, man, what a beautiful time, man. It's like you can, you can meet people on the internet better than you can in real life. You know what I mean? You can be part of communities and like learn and, and like, yeah. And then, you know what I mean? So like, no, like, I know, bro. Like I'm in NFT. So, you know, I'm all about, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it's like, it's like kind of like a group collective where you can come together, share thoughts, share ideas, like grow as a person. And like, honestly, I became closer with some of the people in those communities than I have with, you know, friends in real life. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah. It's a special time no, we're living in. You can't take it for granted. Absolutely, man. It's the same for, with me. Cause like I grew up, for example, I was around a lot of like blue collar people working at UPS or, you know, working nine to five. And then like, we're just stuck in that world. But like now with Which the nothing internet, wrong with that. No, nothing, like, nothing wrong with that. It's just like, you know, like sometimes you just want to figure out like, okay, like for the past 10 years, all my friends and all my family, that's only doing this, like what else is out there? And then you yeah. start to find what else is out there. And you're like, oh, shit, like I'm actually interested in this. Like, damn. Yeah, yeah no, so it's, it's cool. So it's taking advantage of that. And with that, let's lead into the Discord thing. So now there's even different levels of like communicating and, and uh, getting in a, in a community in, in, um, 
in the internet. Now you have tools like Discord. The the boomers use WhatsApp. I used WhatsApp too. Uh, <laughs> just Slack and all that for like, but like Discord is such a tool. Um, you can put bots in there. I know you've all you've showed me how to how the bots work. You can organize. Yeah. You, there's a voice. It's um. So Discord. Am I right about this? Like it was um. It started for gamers, and mm-hmm. it's now expanded. Like everybody uses it. People are doing like YouTube streams with Discord and stuff. Yeah, dude, you, YouTube, I mean, YouTube, <laughs> Discord started out, it was just for like gamers and like, it was super popular for the gaming culture. And basically like, you know, everybody's Discord is called a server. And so they just run when you enter someone's Discord, it's like a window, you know, and it's just a server that's dedicated to that Discord where you can upload, you know, different conversations, different videos, podcasts, like it's kind of like a brain dump. And like, I really like it because like, um, you know, everybody's different in the way that they use it. But like for me, like I like to have a bunch of different channels. And when I specifically want to know something, I go to that specific channel and I'm just like, oh, I want to talk about staking. Here's all, all the stuff about staking. I want to talk about DeFi. Here's all my stuff about DeFi. Um, and then I can have those different conversations within there. But also you have so many people that can, you know, interact and start conversations and figure out new things of what's going on. So that combined with some of like the different bots that you can add to it and like the different integrations that you can add to it, like really for me, it was like a game changer. Um, it helped me build a community. And then it also just helped me learn a lot too, because I always had a place to kind of come and like share those common knowledge thoughts that I was having and like d- develop those conversations like deeper. So, yeah. So, all right. So all the channels. So when I, when I first got introduced to discord through, through you, thank you, by the way, for showing me that, um, it's, it, I, I, I used to get overwhelmed with all the channels and stuff on the side. And like, whenever, so, the way we made like friendly bear research is pretty much like nuts and bolts. And like, I'm, I'm still getting adjusted to the culture of discourse. So like, for example, when I go to like other trader, uh, discords and stuff, I see all these channels and all it, it seems really overwhelming at first, but is that like how like people are doing it these days? Like, 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 like there's like a learning curve, but then it becomes clear. And that's like even helpful, like to have more. Yeah, I mean, from from what I found, right, like, uh, like, and Discord has been around a while, and I'm by far like not an expert or anything like that. But um, <clears throat> from having a community within there for the past two or three years, like, basically, some people just wanted to look like uh, it always wants it to be active, right? Always something going on, always something go- going on, always something going on, and then like, um, which is good because you get more engagement because there's always something going on. But then like. I felt like I've I've been able to kind of build stronger connections with the different channels because like you said, at first it is overwhelming. You got all these different notifications going off and you're like, yo, what? Like, I don't even know where to find this. But like, once you understand kind of like how to use it and like the flow, because different discords are different um, and some, you know, utilize multiple channels. Some only kind of have like one main focus channel. Some people don't even use the text channel. They only do like the voice channel. So it's really depending on, you know, what the goal is, but for me, like using the search function. So I like having all the channels over there and then I just utilize the search function. And like, so the search bar at the top right is really great because I'll search for like, um, like say I wanted to find out, you know, all the content about top, right? Like say everyone was talking about top and I'm like, huh? So I want to kind of filter out. I can just search top. It'll pull me right to the channel and all the like most recent comments about it. And I can catch up all on that. Or say like, um, say I, I, I called out a price target, like, weeks ago and i was like oh you know bitcoin's gonna get to 28k and possibly push to 30. i can just hit the search bar and search 28k and it'll it'll show me all the times that i mentioned 28k and i can go right to that information so i really like it for that reason um and again like for me it's more of a brain dump so you can just dump all the different information you can see uh all the information you come across because uh, oftentimes i'll be doing so much research i'll be like oh i need to get back to that i need to get back to that and like so i can just organize it all through discord um so for me that's like how i like to utilize it yeah so the brain dump okay so then you, then you go in the search box and you always have you can always ref like go back to it yeah like instantly so, all you need to yeah, do is remember yeah, yeah. one like so for example like say i um you know say i've been meaning to watch your uh friendly bear episode with the uh the one guy dan mcclory like yeah. i could just oh, i could you just search dan his McClory. name real quick. yeah yeah you know yeah. exactly and to pull it up um yeah or different like things like that and so so for example um like i recently upgraded my apple iphone like iCloud storage. So it seems like that's what how to do things these days. I used to be like deleting old photos and and stuff and just be have a very few on there, just delete them right away. But now it seems like the storage and stuff is just like you can just like collect a massive amount and you search for them. You can go back and search and like you you know you put stuff on the cloud or in this case you put stuff on Discord. Just leave it there. Just brain dump it. 
and uh, don't worry about being perfect. Just put it there, put it there, put it there. It's, and then you always have it there and you can just go back by searching through keywords, you know? Yeah. It makes it easy. Like, especially like, so someone new will come into like my discord and they'll be like, Oh, like I really had a question about like where I could, um, you know, where I could bridge across chain, uh, Ethereum. And like, literally I can just be like, yeah, Oh, just pull up here in my search. I was like, search bridge across chain. They search that phrase. And then like all these different articles I've posted and all these different links I've already posted in because, you know, I've helped, I've been helping people over the past few years, understand like web three and blockchain better. I'm like, yeah, I've already talked about all this stuff. So, you know, instead of me constantly making new videos or constantly making new articles about it, um, like I like to deal with people in person. So I'm like, yo, I'm right here in the discord right now. Let's chat about it and like search these terms. They can pull up yeah. the terms and be like, oh, what'd you mean by this? Like, oh, this is a really good resource and kind of get real time feedback. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, I know. OK, so with the friendly bear discord um, and soon we're going to do the macro driver one when we start to grow it more. But uh, friendly bear, like uh, I have like a specific trade floor and there's like just a few traders in there, the most serious ones. And we are doing like fighter jets formation where we're just communicating very efficiently with each other. And discord, we do use the, I, I, you know, I utilize the search feature to go back and like see the certain ticker of the stock. It like puts everything clear. It's, it's actually a really good tool. It's an efficient tool. And then you got the general chat where everybody's in there. We have the bots um, on all the pumpers and all the short reports. So like, for example, Justin, I don't know if you noticed that there's like short reports that, put, be, that are put out on Twitter by short report funds, by firms. And we have all the bots on them. You actually helped out put all the bots and, uh, I know and somebody changed my uh somebody changed my status though. Now I only see I only see like two channels in the Discord. Um, so I only see the general discussion and the options and the rules channel. Oh, okay. We gotta uh check that. Uh, but yeah, you know, so you should be able to see the trading floor, right? Nah, just general so. discuss. Well, I got trading pit, general discussion. Okay, yeah. And so then, so the but the trade not right floor... now, not to dis not yeah, to distract. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Sorry. But yeah, the trade floor and the pumper section and education section. Yeah, that's for the the analyst status and the quantitative status. So yeah, we got to get you as the chat mod in there. But um, but yeah, you know, it's just been a great tool. You know what I mean? So like just communicating back and forth. It's better than WhatsApp. WhatsApp, I don't see that. So the screenshots with WhatsApp, I was doing it like it 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 distorts it. Discord, yeah. when you when you copy and paste, it's nice and clear. It's crisp. It's very especially, efficient. Especially, especially if you get like the nitro, you know what I mean? Like Discord. Yeah. So what? So of... what is that? So what is the, the nitro when people put like uh, the boost and all that? What is that about? Um. Yeah. It just gets you a few extra benefits. Um. Like so. Let me see if I can uh, pull up what are some of the the benefits of it. I know I, it allows your server to handle more like volume load, right? So when you have a bunch of people or you have a bunch of people streaming, like you don't lose quality. Um, it allows you to upload larger file sizes. Ah, so, okay. Say you have like a really big, like, you know, file you need to upload or you want to upload, like, boom. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. So bigger file sharing up, uploads, uh, files up to 500 megabytes, HD streaming, um, custom stickers. So like if you have a community that's kind of like more artsy or goofy, like you can make stickers like of the friendly bear, you know, and like yeah. put them in there. Um you can join more servers. Um, so a bunch of like different, like random things, like, you know, customize it, longer messages up to 4,000 characters. And um, it's really just like, if you're going to be on it all day long, like, which at the time when I was like really, really bit busy with my community, I was, um, I definitely had it for a hundred bucks for a year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So the boost, it's just like different people could, could like, uh, it just like, come, you know, it adds up like different people get it. And then it's like, so you split the cost basically is that what it is um yeah so basically like if you get people to boost your discord it kind of shows it kind of gives your your discord like some cachet right like it's kind of like a flex like um you're like you'll get like people will get like these uh diamond stars next to yeah, their yeah, names yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah yeah and it'll just like the level of your discord will go up and up and up and so like the higher level of discord that you have it's like more respected and like people can start finding you and like search functions if you want them to ah, and different I things see. like that I see. Interesting. Okay. Um, great. So yeah, we went over everything with discord. Um, I do like the, I think people like, it's almost like a culture. Like people like being in certain categories, you know, it's like you're being, uh, yeah. like different roles. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. So yeah. Like, so people get different roles and some people feel more comfortable. Like some people will probably <clears throat> only want to hang out in the trading pit 
And then some people like only like options, right? So they're just like, nah, yeah. like I'm just chilling in the options. And it's cool because like I said, that's how you start to make more of those meaningful connections where people are like, oh, like I really resonate with crypto. Like I'm always in the crypto channel, right? right. Compared to someone else might always be in the NFT channel. Someone else might always be in like the DAO channel. Like, um, so it's like, you know, you yeah. can really find like a kind of optimize for the community and the conversations you want to have. Awesome. Great, man. So um, any other thoughts we got? Like, let's see, we covered a lot here. So any other topic you want to cover before we start to close it out? No, nah, man, we, we had a good jabber going back and forth. Um, let's get Absolutely. something on the books more regularly and, uh, you know, yeah, fight come... off the market and bounce back next week swinging. <laughs> always, man. Always. It's, that's that's uh, like a fighter. That's what I love about the markets, too. You, you got to always improve on your mindset and like you got to be relentless and have all these qualities like I always like the movies, for example, like Rocky and like these, like, you know, what's a pursuit of happiness? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. That is the way. Like that I'm is overcoming the, that is objectives the way. and I don't give a damn. <laughs> always, always, man. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's the market brings that out of you. If you want to be successful at this stuff, it's, you got to be relentless in that way, you know? So it's always good. But, um, but yeah, Justin, let's, let's uh, do this soon again. And yeah, let me know when you're in LA. You're good to catch up. Uh, yeah, I'll be downtown. Actually, I'm going to the Dodgers game on Sunday. Oh, um, nice. I actually have a, I have two extra tickets. Uh, so I, me and my girl are going and we have two extra tickets. So I don't know if you and if you want to bring a friend or, um, you know, yeah, I, let, me, I, let me let me know. Um, yeah, I think I have someone in mind. Perfect. Okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah. So I'll text my girl and double check to make sure she hasn't given him away yet. And then, and then I'll text. Yeah. You. Awesome, man. Well, it's good. To, good to hear from you. All right, man. So let's catch up soon. And yeah, we'll see you later. Thanks. All Thanks, right. Justin. I'll later, guys. You.